Hello, SBC family. This is Pastor Ivan Pitts here again with another daily devotional. We have been in the book of Philippians, uh, at least for me and my uh, devotionals, chapter two. I love the book of Philippians because it is known as the happy book. Um, and it's interesting, uh, the dichotomy of this happy book is that it's part of what we call the prison epistles. Paul, writing to the church in Philippi, he had a very, very close relationship with the church in Philippi. He, um, it was the first church he established on European soil, and it was under Roman rule. And he was actually in prison. Isn't it iron, ironic that a, a, a letter of the happy epistle is written by someone who's in prison? And he was writing to encourage the people in Philippi, the Christians in Philippi who were in a context and in an environment of rule by a force that didn't always recognize and respect them for who they were. As a matter of fact, the Romans were happy. You can worship any God you want to worship. You can do whatever you want to do. Just make sure you are obedient to them and that you do, um, that you put the Roman Empire first. And it's interesting because we know that if Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we must put him first. So is this, all this, this tension in this place, uh, in this happy letter. And we see in Philippians chapter 2, uh, Paul begins to tell the church that he loves dearly about the importance of who Jesus was. And he tells us in the first seven verses of what it means to have the right mindset, what it means to reflect and to think on who Jesus is. And then it begins to describe what Jesus did. And then in verse 8, I'll read here, and it says, And being found in human form, verse 8, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is so powerful to me. I could focus on various words out of that text, the obedience and we could focus about humility, but the word I want to really focus on today just for just a couple of moments is sacrifice. I am thinking about Jesus's sacrifice. If you read the previous verses, all that he gave up, the equality with God, the, the royalty, the, the majesty, the, the power that he had, he gave up all that. He emptied himself. That was a word we looked at a few days ago. And he sacrificed all that for you and for me. And when I look at and I think about, when I look at and think about this, this word sacrifice and what he did, it literally means to give up or to be slaughtered or to um, relinquish something on behalf of someone else. And what's very powerful is that how much God must love us that his son Jesus relinquished, gave up, was slaughtered, was sacrificed, was, was punished, for me, and I did not deserve it. Now, I know, you know, people say, well, you know, I'm not that bad. It's not about how bad you are and how sinful you are. It's the fact that someone gave up all this for our benefit, a sacrifice. I'm reminded of a book um, by uh, Victor Frankl, um, and it's called A Man's Search for Meaning. And he, and he talks about what he experienced while he was in the um, concentration camps in Auschwitz. Um, during the in Nazi Germany, and he talked about what, how they would, uh, you know, be slaughtered and how they would be beaten and how they didn't know when they were going to eat and how often they would eat and so forth and so on. And he shares a story about how laughter happy in a time of of stress and frustration, how joy and happiness and laughter is critical to survival. One of the things he talked about, they survived the concentration, but they, they, they found a way to laugh and have joy in the midst of this challenge. But the other thing was the sacrifice for each other. He tells a story of a young lady who had um, received um, two pieces of fruit, two very small berries, and that she hadn't eaten in a few days, but yet the person who was in the prison next to her was being beaten and being tortured and hadn't eaten longer than her. She ate one of the berries, but saved the other berry for the other young lady for when she came out of being tortured. And she gave it to her. And sacrifice is a picture of, our generosity is a picture of, our compassion is a picture of someone who needs something, 
but sacrifices and gives it to someone who needs it more. This picture of Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, is a picture of Jesus being obedient, even obedient to the term of dying on a cross, publicly humiliating himself for our benefit. What a mighty God we serve. I want to go to God in prayer. And as I go to God in prayer, I want you to think about how much God must love you, how valuable God must think that we are. And you don't ever have to sell yourself short. It doesn't matter if you're worthy of something. When you get something because someone sacrificed for you, you'll see tomorrow when we talk about the response of what those who appreciate the sacrifices that were made, what that looks like. Let us go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for yet another reminder of how wonderful Jesus is and how we so lovingly and willingly make him, allow him, not make him, but allow him to be Lord and Savior. Thank you for his sacrifice. Thank you for his love. And God, will you allow us somehow, some way today to sacrifice to what we need or what we desire to give it to, to share it with someone who desires it or needs it more. God, give us a heart of sacrifice. Give us a life that is sacrificial for others and for your glory. God, forgive us for our selfishness and God, allow us another chance. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Until we meet again, I love you. Peace. Peace.